Well, blessings to all of you as we gather once, once more together here at the South Parish Congregational Church here in Augusta. It's good to be with all of you. Uh, my name is Nathan Richards. I am the pastor here at the South Parish Congregational Church, and it's good to be with you all. Today is a very rainy and blustery day outside as we, or as I, uh, uh, videotape this, and it's good to be with you and to share with you. So let's begin on this windy and rainy day with a word of prayer. We thank you today, God, that we can come together in this time and share with you and with each other. We thank you for this opportunity uh, as a part of this midweek time, this midweek message, that we can come together and hear your word and share uh, thoughts together. We thank you, God, that in the a cool breeze of this fall season that we can find the warmth of your spirit waiting for us where we are and where we go. All in the name of our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. The gospel reading this, this week as a part of the revised lectionary uh, readings for this week and comes from Matthew's gospel, the 21st chapter, verses 33 through 46. And here, Matthew tells or shares a message through a parable through Jesus' words, a message through Jesus' words that remind us uh, of the importance of recognizing who Jesus is in our lives. And it also talks a lot about rejection. And as a part of the story, uh, so often in Matthew's gospel, uh, the author quotes many words of Scripture from the, what we know as the Old Testament. And one of the quotes that he uses near the end of the reading is from Psalm 118. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Stones, rejection, Marvelous in God's eyes. All these kind of images come to life and are put to life, really, um, through Jesus' words, taking them from the psalm and placing them as a part of the parable of the vineyard. So I would really offer to you to take time to read Matthew 21, verses 33 through 46, which is known as the parable of the vineyard. And really at the heart of that message, and again, I I encourage you to read it. The heart of that message is rejection. The rejection of people or by people of Jesus and of God's plan. And how that can happen and what is the result of that happening. And as you certainly can imagine, the idea of rejecting Jesus, the idea of rejecting God's plan, really doesn't lead to a positive outcome. It didn't for the people that Jesus is speaking to, namely the, the nation of Israel, particularly the leaders, the religious leaders of that time. And it doesn't lead to a positive outcome for us either when we reject the stone that God has provided for us to be the cornerstone of our lives. I guess one of the questions I'd like to kind of leave with you today and, and share with you is, have you ever been rejected? Have you ever felt rejected because of who you are? Because of your faith? Have you felt rejected because of your age? Have you felt rejected because of your beliefs? Have you felt rejected and, and pushed aside even perhaps for the color or because of the color of your skin or, or where you come from? Have you ever, ever felt rejection? This is really at the heart of, again, this message, at least for me, when I read it over in Matthew's Gospel and in other, so many other places in the Bible. When we think about our Lord and we think about what he stands for and what his teachings are about, we recognize the importance of them, at least we should. 
as, as Matthew would have us believe, and certainly as the psalmist would have us to believe, is the cornerstone of our lives. Now, what does that mean? Well, during Jesus's time and in much of uh, antiquity, now I've got some blocks here that I brought in, if I can get slided over to show you. Buildings were made in such a way, without going into a lot of detail and recognizing I'm no architect, but buildings were made in such a way that there was a cornerstone that was placed in such a way in the construction of the building, and we'll just pretend for a minute that this block is the cornerstone, that basically, in some sense, supported most of the weight of the building. And as you can imagine, uh, that would be a very important stone to have in the building. And upon that cornerstone, in a sense, the rest of the building was constructed. So I'm trying to be clever here and construct a small building for you, remembering that this is the cornerstone. And upon that corner and that stone, the rest of the building and most of its weight at some point would rest. Not a bad building, is it? And the understanding, of course, is that upon this building, um, upon the construction of this building, the idea would be remain the importance of the cornerstone, and it would always be marked in such a way that it would be remembered as the cornerstone for the building. It's what the rest of the building really rested upon. So you start to get the image here, don't you? of if Jesus is the cornerstone of our lives, then all the rest of our lives is built upon that stone. Now, Jesus is also referring in Matthew's gospel to those who would reject that stone. And as I've said, when we reject the cornerstone that is Jesus Christ in our lives, the rest of our, well, the rest of our body, the rest of our building, if you will, our temple, if you will, um, won't stand. It's rejected. And the understanding, of course, is that when we remove that cornerstone from our lives in any way, shape, or method, well, I'm going to try and catch it before it all falls, the rest of the building will fall down. And I'll take it one more step. Because when we think about rejecting Jesus, you might be thinking, well, of course we wouldn't reject our Lord. But there's many ways in which we do reject Jesus. There's another chapter in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 25, uh, chapter 25, which reflects upon this. Uh, as he talks about the separation of, of sheep and goats in the time of judgment. And Jesus says, when you did it to the least of these, that is either something good or something harmful, and the least of these are really representing almost all of us at one time or another. Jesus says, you did it to me. This is a very, very powerful and important statement because many of us find ourselves rejecting others and don't realize that by doing so, we're really rejecting God's kingdom and our Lord, who is our cornerstone. When we reject others, we are truly rejecting Jesus. When we reject others because of a different faith, a different belief, their age, where they come from, the color of a person's skin. In truth, we're really rejecting what Jesus stands for because really at the heart of the kingdom of God, is love and care and compassion for other people and demonstrating that care and compassion and love each day to others, regardless of who they are, where they come from, their age, or any of the things I've mentioned. That's what the kingdom of God is built upon. I'm going to pick up one of the blocks that fell because I'm going to reconstruct my temple on us. As Jesus is the cornerstone the rest of who we are is built upon him. And the kingdom of God begins to develop around that cornerstone that is Jesus.
And we basically, when we, when we go to church and when we worship together, we're building that kingdom as a part of our lives. We're constructing that kingdom based upon the cornerstone that is Jesus Christ in our lives. That cornerstone, that person, that teaching, that spirit of God should be at the cornerstone of our lives. And the kingdom of God in our lives is built upon the, the understanding of showing care and compassion and love to other people. That's how the kingdom is built. That's what's at the heart of the message of God. And when we reject other people, for whatever reason, because of our differences in any number of ways, it's just as if we're deconstructing that temple. We're deconstructing that kingdom. It's just as if we take that cornerstone out. And what happens, well, the kingdom falls down around us kind of dramatic, <laughs> but it makes the point. The kingdom of God, that is the very person of Jesus Christ and what he stood for, is built really one block at a time in our lives as we build our lives upon who Jesus Christ is. And so when we reject that cornerstone by rejecting others, as Jesus would point out to us in Matthew 25, the kingdom, well, can't stand, at least the one in our lives. So, with that said, what do we need to do? Well, we need to continue to rebuild this temple if it's kind of falling apart. There's always a chance to rebuild. There's always a chance to seek out and find that cornerstone again and put it in place in our lives and rebuild around that cornerstone that is Jesus Christ. So I urge you to do that. That I urge you to do this by going to church, by worshiping God, by taking time to pray, by rebuilding, if necessary, that kingdom of our Lord through care and compassion and love towards others in your life and start today. And as Matthew would have us believe, that when we come to that point in which Jesus is the cornerstone of our lives and is not rejected, then we will become the people that God knows we can be. In truth, we will represent and be a part of the very kingdom of God. And that's my prayer for all of us today. I want us all to be a part of that kingdom, to be a part of the goodness that is God's love, shared in compassion and care and love each day of our lives. Let's pray about that. Lord, help us to, if necessary, rebuild our lives by putting you as the cornerstone of our, of our very existence. We ask God that you're your spirit would be our guide, that if we have come to a point in our life where perhaps you are not the cornerstone, that we would seek you out and find you and place you in that most prominent of positions in our lives as the cornerstone of our life and that we might build upon you. And if we have found that cornerstone, that we would continue to build upon that cornerstone, showing care and love and respect and compassion to who we meet each day. Lord, through our worship, through our prayers, through our very lives, let us continue to build upon the cornerstone that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Take care, my friends. Hope to see you soon at church. Uh, if not, I hope to see you perhaps coming to visit during the course of the week. I'm here at the South Parish Church on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Uh, you can either give a call to the church or just pop in and visit. Love to see you. Until then, may God's blessings be upon you. Go in peace, my friends. Amen.